weaponized poverty. It is deliberate. Nigerians, wake up. The destruction of the economy is not by accident. It is deliberate. Let this sink into your head. It is not by accident that we have not managed to be able to generate electricity in Nigeria in 60-something years. I recently found a national... Hello, my great and wonderful people. How on a day today? I hope all of you are well. Today we get some messages and videos for our table. We want to say quickly the review to you concerning the things we want to say if they happen right now for inside this country, Nigeria. Just as you rightly see one from the introduction, when it basically they receive from retired barrister Dele Farotimi and also a human rights activist. This man, for a short while now, will not hear anything from them. And now it don't come aside to review to every Nigerians the reason why ABC in intentionally keep quiet. They watch uh, everything when ABC if they happen today. All right. Before then, we equally get this other message when ABC would they receive as a threat from uh, the Arewa youths to the federal government of Nigeria led by Tinibun. And the title of this one, Tosi, Arewa youths threatened protests over CBN fan relocation to Lagos. All right, before we go on again, I want to quickly beg you for one favor. I beg help us to like this video because the more you like this video, the more YouTube they recommend them to people. Now their own policy now in be that very one. Thank you so much for your support. Now pay attention to this very area. One message when it is they send to the federal government of Nigeria concerning this relocation of CBN to Lagos. We'll come back for more. The Pro-Democracy Northern Organization, the Joint Action Northern Youth Associations, has rejected the relocation of key departments of the Central Bank of Nigeria and the headquarters of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria to Lagos by the President Bolatine Buled administration. The association, comprising 16 civil society organizations in the north, such as the Airway Defense League, Association of Northern Nigeria Students, Ewa Youth for Development and National Unity, Ewa Young Women Rights Advocate Council, Northern Youth in Defense of Democracy, Ewa Radio and Television Commentators, among others, warned against the decision. According to the coalition, the failure of the President Tinebulet government to rescind the decision will force them to mobilize the youth across the 19 northern states for mass action against the administration. The CBN recently announced the relocation of some departments to Lagos, citing congestion at the head office. Similarly, the federal government announced the relocation of funds headquarters from Abuja to Lagos. The relocation was officially announced by the Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development, Festus Kiamo, in a memo dated January 15, 2024, and signed by the Managing Director of FAN, Mrs. Olabo Mikuku. However, Ahaji Matola Abubakar, who is the convener of the Joint Action Committee of Northern Youth Associations, at a joint press conference held at the Ewa House, Kaduna on Monday, declared the relocation of the two agencies to Lagos as illegal, null and void. Abubakar argued that by relocating the two agencies to Lagos, the federal government was not only disrespecting the law but creating a sense of alienation and exclusion of Northerners. He said the North would seek all means, including legal, political as well mass action, to ensure that the government rescinded the decision to move the two agencies to Lagos. He called on the federal government to prevail on two agencies to reverse their decisions immediately and restore the status quo of the CBN and the FAN headquarters in Abuja, the federal capital territory. We wish to warn the federal government that such actions will not go unchallenged. We will resist them through all available means, including legal, political and civil actions. We will not allow any attempt to undermine the status and integrity of Abuja as the federal capital and the seat of government. We also request the federal government to ensure that all federal institutions and agencies are adequately funded and staffed in Abuja. 
We are not against Lagos or any other part of the country, but we are against any form of discrimination, dominion and marginalization of any part of the country, he said. All right, my great and wonderful people, I believe say all of them are not here, the warning message when it be said these northerners send across to Amebola Tenebo and the federal government of Nigeria concerning this CBN issue. Now, we'll leave you to share your own opinion with us for the comment session concerning that very one because of time, even as we equally leave you to watch uh, this interview when it be said with the receiver from Barista Dele Farotimi of recent. I'll come back for more. We see the truth. But we ignore the truth and we persuade ourselves self delusionally that the lies that we have seen and that we have told would back something good. I have been deliberately quiet this year, at least since a few months now. I've been deliberately quiet because it was necessary to let those who fostered this evil on us. To have the time, perhaps, to reflect on just exactly what they have done to the collective in pursuit of their selfish, narrow interests. It is impossible to awaken those who pretend to sleep. We were in this Lagos together in March, when the street of Lagos was overtaken with Oro. Yeah, Oro, because an ethnic group and anyone who appears to resemble that ethnic group, that nationality, or anyone that you have tagged that is likely to vote in a particular manner becomes enemy under the guise of traditional religion. In this state, this is supposed to be the most cosmopolitan of all parts of Nigeria. And we all pretended. When I say we, speaking of the pastors, the imams, those you consider leaders of thoughts in society, you kept quiet. And then you bewail the evil that has overtaken our land. Even when my own lips were sealed, there were people who were speaking. Yele spoke, 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 spoke. And I'm speaking of Yele because he's the one in my own generation. It's Baba Umano. Yes, there are many other people. They spoke on fire. You would always find accommodation for you when you are elected to do so. I realized that something has to shift. And it is in that realization that I spoke of the idea of citizenship. Because it is only citizenship as an idea that can stand in challenge of the prevailing idea that is governing Nigeria. Every system, whatever is utilitarian value, whatever it is you're looking to do with that system, it must be designed with that end in mind. So in designing the thing, the habit of the system shapes its character, and it is critical to look at its habit to paint its character. Nigeria is essentially a feudal state. Because the reality is that aside from the traditional institutions that were in place long before the white man found his unfortunate legs, and the Arabs before them found their way into this space. We had our kings. And those kings are still in existence. As moribund as the kingship and the emirship and the traditional rulership system might have become, appointees of today's government who are the true monarchs. Reality is, today's Nigeria is not republican. It is anything but. So you have a situation where you have a constitution. He says it is the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, but it is not an expression of the will of the people who are known as Nigerians, who are Nigerians, whether they like it or not. 
because they cannot freely express their right to self-determination within the construct that says it is a federation. So in reality, what you find is that Nigeria is a feudal state comprising essentially, as the Supreme Court has now confirmed, of 37 states. That is the reality. And then there is a sultan at the head, and forget the one in Sokoto, I'm not speaking to his eminence. I'm talking about the sultan that is inside the rock at Asokoro. They change them periodically in a game of succession that has never been reflective of the will of the people. So, be clear, you have a feudal system. Your governors, they are the emirs. He, the Daguda, he is the Sultan. The one before him was the Sultan. The one before that one was also a Sultan. And as long as the 1999 fraud persists, whoever sits in that office would be the Sultan of Nigeria. That, unfortunately, is the reality of Nigeria. So, the entirety of the design of governance, the choices that the government makes at any point in time, is in promotion and sustenance of the feudal system that it has built. So what are these design choices? Feudalism exists on two critical legs. Two. The first is weaponized ignorance. Those who are the subjects of feudal states are systematically kept ignorant because it is in their ignorance that they will find acceptance for their non-equality with fellow men who have only one head, two legs, and every other digit just like themselves. But feudalism is only a step to serve who is what you will call the citizen, because the Nigerian is a self. The self is deliberately kept ignorant because it is in his ignorance that he would accept the state of serfdom, which is little different from slavery. So get it clear, ignorance is a policy goal of the state once it is a feudal one. Look around you, what has happened? We're in Lagos, this is Lagos, the fifth largest economy, if not the fourth, in the whole of Africa. What about his educational system? looks revolutionary. What is it about it that even looks contemporary? From provision of infrastructure to even the human resource, the literature are teaching children. And what are they even teaching them? The entire education curriculum of Nigeria is useless, as with the same with most other African countries. What are you teaching? They are graduating engineers that cannot build paved roads. Every time I see Lebanese, Syrians, Chinese engineers on our road project, my heart bleeds. 60 years, 60 plus years after, after independence, this is where we are. It's not by accident. It's by design. If you can be, see, it's not by everything that you see around you. It's by design. These are design choices. But we... We pray, we're praying. Our Naira will soon become parallel with the dollar. We're still praying. We should even fast. Those are systemic intentions. And those are the choices it made in order to pursue the goal. So when you have finished dealing with weaponized ignorance, you now need to look. What are the other design choices? Weaponized poverty weaponized poverty. It is deliberate. Nigerians, wake up. The destruction of the economy is not by accident. The destruction of the economy is not by accident. It is deliberate. Let this sink into your head. It is not by accident that we have not managed to be able to generate electricity in Nigeria in 60-something years. I recently found a National Concord editorial 
dating back to 1983, speaking to the incompetence of NEPA with power generation. 1983. Guess how many years ago that was? 31 years ago. And we're still talking about off NEPA, up NEPA, off NEPA, up NEPA, up till now. When are we going to come to the point where we begin to just accept, acknowledge that these things are not problems to those who are pretending to solve the problem. They are design options. Bola Metinobu came into office in spite of all of his shenanigans, in a blaze of lies, and meets. And one of the first things he said was, subsidy is gone. So now subsidy is gone, but subsidy is there. The currency has lost at least close to 100% of its value. I'm not an economist, but I do have a pocketbook. I have a wallet. I know how far it has shrunk. I know how many more people are forced to beg. I know how many more people are forced to find ways to extend their hand to. I know just exactly how easy it has become for Nigerians since this Jabuda brought himself into office. It has been hell in this country. It was hell before he came, but it's gotten worse insecurity insecurity also deepens the poverty because it then means that those who have been living on subsistence farming are suddenly driven away from their farms the emirs who are their tenures confirmed by the supreme court what did they say they were all busy falling over themselves to thank mr president the sultan they didn't need to thank the people because the people's vote did not count. The people's vote did not count. So they did not need to thank the people. And they did not need to thank the judiciary for upholding the law because they all know that the judiciary, our judiciary does not uphold any law. So because we're familiar with the fact of what might happen or what will happen, because think about it, people were waving flags at Lekki Toll Gate. They were killed murdered, the state denied it, fellow serfs denied the humanity of those who were murdered, the international community looked away, they looked away, pretended they did not see what they saw, they unsaw what they saw, you know what I'm saying, they pretended as long as the oil is flowing and refugees are not flowing out, they're fine with whatever shit happens in our country, I have no guns to give to you. I'm not going to tell you to go and buy a port. We are all going to have to figure this out together, but understand very clearly, nothing short of a revolution will save us from this mess. All right, my great and wonderful people, I believe you will not pay attention to the details of every words when ABC barrister Dele Farotimi and also human rights activists release for this very uh interview honestly anytime when they say this man come outside to speak you know say yes something they go down and i don't need to explain that very one to you and i so much love the last word when it be say in talk say anything when they say what they do today if truly we will see the lights of this country nigeria not when they say we will do outside revolution Yes, apart from that, if we wait for election, now joke we day. If we think say yes, foreign bodies will come help us, we still remain a joke. Now we will do about ourselves until we stand up to that responsibility, say enough is enough. Nowhere when it be a savior go come. Jesus don't do one for us, God don't do one for us. Now we need to do one this very time by ourselves all right my great and wonderful people i will leave you to share your own opinion with us in the comment section even as i draw the line of this very broadcast here i will see you again when i see you remember
we love you all bye bye